How to negotiate when you're in a relationship. My husband and I have been married for almost 12 years. There are several things that we have had to negotiate throughout that time, more than a, more than several, actually. We all have to negotiate with our partner, whether it's a very close friendship, whether it's a family member, whether it's a spouse, there is a right way to negotiate so that both people are heard, the feelings of both people are honored, and the needs of both people are also honored. So today I'm going to go over the seven characteristics that need to be present in your thought process when you're trying to negotiate something with someone sh that who you share a relationship with. If that sounds good, stick around. But first, I want you to check and see if you're a subscriber here. And if not, click the subscribe button and the little bell so that you learn when we drop videos like this to help you live a more successful professional and personal life. I'll be right back. Guild Coaching more success, less stress. First, before we get started talking about how to negotiate in a, in a marriage or in a relationship, let's just set the stage by saying that a, a marriage, a partnership, a relationship is a collaboration between two people. It's a collaborative negotiation between partners okay, between individual and joint life plans that are not dictated by gender roles or traits. They don't represent the old model of marriage. Negotiating collaboratively begins with both people in the marriage being able to identify his or her wants in any given situation. All right. These wishes are stated and the reasons for them are provided. And it's as each is it's as if you're sitting at a kitchen table. I'm going to actually put up an infographic um, of what I'm talking about. Okay, so take a look at your screen if you can. It's as if you put these wishes on your virtual kitchen table where agreement, differences, and disagreements become apparent. From this perspective, differences and disagreements are on the table between you, not exclusively within either one of you. And so they're shared. Okay, so here it says husband wants X and wife wants Y. And so both X and Y are placed on the table and then they're negotiated. That depicts the idea that wants are openly stated. They're looked at side by side, they're negotiated so that some sort of a win-win outcome can occur. This depicts really, really clearly the idea that disagreements or differences between the two of you are not who you are, but they're just things that you have. That idea in and of itself can help save your relationship. Just because we disagree on this, you know, what to do at this particular time, doesn't mean it's me against you or one person in the relationship against the other person in the relationship. It depersonalizes the issue. And when you depersonalize it, that's when negotiation really can take place. So the, the type of negotiation that takes place in marriages or, or deep relationships is not the same thing that you see in business where each person's trying to maximize their own gain at the expense of the other. If that is how a, a relationship negotiation is going in your relationship, please seek therapy because that's a very, very toxic relationship. Negotiation in a relationship is also not a quid pro quo or tit for tat. You do this for me, I'll do that for you. It's not that kind of a negotiation. Negotiating collaboratively, like, and really embrace that word, it's a collaboration. It has the following characteristics. So here are the seven things that have to be present in your mindset for you to be collaboratively negotiating. And if you're paying attention to this, your partner may also want to pay attention to this. So please feel free to share this video with that person. Okay. So number one, in a collaborative negotiation, each partner needs to understand that their spouse or significant other is a valuable person in the same way that he or she is a valuable person. It sounds like no duh, of course, we're both valuable people. But the reason that I have it as number one is because we don't really slow down to recognize that very often. I am special and unique and perfectly imperfect. And so is my spouse, special, unique, and perfectly imperfect. And so I love that perfectly imperfect human just as he is. We don't really slow down to think about that 
as often as we should. And if we did, we'd probably argue less, right? Number two, each partner has to be able to identify wants and desires. It needs to be about them. When I identify my wants and desires, it doesn't need to be about my partner. It needs to be about me. Okay. And you've got to be able to identify your wants and desires so that you are able to communicate those wants and desires. So that's number two. Number three, each partner needs to be willing to negotiate his or her wants and desires. And this means that there is flexibility. Flexibility is so, so vital here. So vital. Rigidity in negotiation is, is not going to get you anywhere. Okay. So you've got to be willing to negotiate. Number four, each person in this partnership can explain, not justify. Justification is, is a harsher energy, but each partner needs to be willing to explain why those wants and desires are important to them. This is where feelings come in. This is where empathetic statements come in. It helps me to feel loved when we do this together. It, it doesn't help me feel loved when this thing happens. And so I'd like to negotiate for this thing to happen less. That type of statement. Okay. So that would be explaining and not justifying. Getting down to the core. Calmly getting down to the core. Okay. Number five. Neither partner needs to seek um, to privilege his or her wants and desires over the other ones. What I mean by that is. If um, the earning income levels are not the same in the household, the person who makes more money is not the one that gets to call the shots. When you're in a collaborative partnership, when you are in a marriage, when you have a spouse or a life partner, anything of that nature, that is a partnership, regardless of who the breadwinner is, you know, whatever. The, we're not playing marbles in the schoolyard. Whoever has the most marbles wins and, you know, that gets his way. So we've got to come to the, to the table, to that virtual kitchen table that I showed you just a minute ago with open and honest energy, open and honest feelings and a level playing field. Just because one person may have more of something than the other, a different gender or is a you know, different wage earnings. Those are two pretty easy things to, to um, notice for differences. It doesn't give him or her more of a right to their desires or their feelings about them than the other person. So number six, each partner also needs to be willing to take action based on the negotiations of wants and desires. There, I, I talk about the law of attraction all the time, and I say that there's action in attraction. So if you're not willing to take action to make this thing happen, do you really want it? So you've got to be willing to take action, not only action in the negotiation, but action in the fulfillment. And number seven, each partner needs to be willing to learn and change based on the outcomes of actions uh, that are taken. So... Today's a new day, right? And tomorrow will be a new day when today has passed us by. Every single day, we can make the choice to either learn and grow or sit still. And I'll tell you a little secret. When you're sitting still, you're still moving. The world is moving forward. And if you say stay still, that means that you're actually moving backward. So you need to really take this growth mindset thing seriously. We have several videos here on Guild State, Guild's YouTube channel about growth mindset versus fixed mindset, that sort of thing. So take your commitment to your marriage, your lifelong partnership, the links that hold you together, take that seriously and take collaboration very, very seriously because when your most fundamental desires are known and honored and the other person's most fundamental desires are known and honored, the marriage will flourish and it will continue to be happy for years and years to come. If this has been of help to you, give me a thumbs up. And if you didn't already subscribe and hit the bell so you learn the next time we drop a video like this to help you live a happier life full of love and collaboration. Talk to you soon.